are we Muslim Americans or American Muslims? And for some reason, there seems to be a lot of significance about whether it's Muslim first, American second, or American first and Muslim second. And I, and I always kind of say, you know, hello. I mean, it's about as significant as two bald-headed men arguing over who has the comb, who uses it first. It really doesn't matter. What, what, what do I mean by that? I don't think that the, the, the arrangement really uh, depicts the intention. Let me give you an example. It's a little bit like asking the question, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? And there are people who will debate that issue, the chicken or the egg, and, and we'll go back and forth. But I say again, it really doesn't matter. If the chicken comes first, being the African-American that I am from the South, I'm going to sprinkle some flour water and some seasoning, and I'm going to fry and eat the chicken. OK? If the egg comes first, loving my omelets as I do, I am going to indeed chop up some green peppers, some onions, some mushrooms, throw some cheese in, and I'm going to make myself an omelet and eat the egg. So either way, I'm going to engage it. I am going to engage either the chicken or the egg. The, the, the aspect is engagement. And that's what I'm talking about in terms of American, Muslim, Muslim, Muslim America. What the fact of the matter is, we, we have to engage both. We are in America, we are Americans, we engage that aspect, and we are Muslims. So really the, the a priority is engagement. We have to engage our faith, and we have to engage the nation in which we live and which we are citizens of, many of us. So that becomes the, the if, if you will, the, the solution to this semantical mystery about American Muslim or Muslim American. No. Either way, you've got to be engaged. Whether you're a Muslim American or American Muslim, you have to engage the society, and you have to engage your dean. Which brings us to the question of uh, how do we engage? And, you know, and the beautiful thing about that is we are people of guidance. Allah did not leave us alone to try to figure it all out. Allah indeed provided guidance for us in the Quran. In fact, it refers to himself in, in, in Surah uh, Baqarah as a book of guidance. As a book of guidance. And, and further on, when you go around into the part of the Quran that deals with, in the same Surah, that deals with you know, the aspect of Ramadan, then it says, you should be grateful that Allah has what? Guided you. So we see that we have guidance in the word of Allah vis-a-vis -vis the Quran. But we also have guidance in the example of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, and the lives of the prophets. Peace and blessings be upon them all. So we're not a people without guidance. And so when we talk about engagement, I think the first priority for a Muslim in terms of engaging, you know, is just something so simple that we overlook it every day, being a good neighbor. What? Yeah. Just being a good neighbor. Many of us live in neighborhoods. We never speak to our neighbors, especially if they're not Muslims. And sometimes when they're Muslims, we don't greet each other. But we don't engage our neighbors. We don't engage our neighborhoods. We live in a vacuum. So maybe we, maybe it's not the near or the desire not to engage our neighbors. Maybe we just lack the skill sets. And so if indeed we lack the skill sets, then again, as I said before, Alhamdulillah for guidance. Because if you don't know how to be a good neighbor, if you have some problems, if you feel somewhat 
challenged about this principle of being a good neighbor, then look at Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was a better neighbor than Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad was a wonderful neighbor. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the orphan that adopted all of humanity. Look at the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as a neighbor. As a neighbor, if his neighbors were hungry, he never asked whether it was a Muslim or a non-Muslim who was hungry. He just wanted to know who was hungry. And how do we alleviate the hunger? When it came to social justice, he didn't have two standards. Treat the Muslims cool and treat the non-Muslims in a bad way. He had a universal standard for justice, recognizing that the Lord of the universe demands justice and the only thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden for himself and his community is injustice. Therefore, he aspired justice for everyone be they Muslim or non-Muslim. And then a great example, look at how he behaved as a neighbor when there was a non-Muslim neighbor who didn't like Muhammad, cho uh, sallallahu alayhi wa chose to insult him by throwing foul things in front of his home, foul things in the walkway in which he had to walk. And when that person became sick, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa inquired about her and then he went to visit her. And then when he visited her, she wanted to know, how did you know I was sick? Now, many of us would have taken the opportunity to get some what we call get back. We say, I know you were sick because you did so and so and so and so and you would have been kind of, you know, you would have you know, taken some time to reproach the individual. But now look at the neighbor, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa As best as I can decipher from the translation, Prophet Muhammad, when inquired by the woman who had, uh, who had insulted him, by the woman who had basically defiled his abode as he came out of it, responded when asked, how did you know I was sick? He said, that thing that you used to do, I missed it. Wow. That thing that you used to do, I missed it. Beautiful neighbor. Excellent neighbor. Not only to Muslims and non-Muslims, even to those who were not even kind to him. He still showed compassion and love and concern. So, if we're having problems in terms of being a neighbor in America, we've got a good example. We've got the best example. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, referred to him as the living Quran.